Did someone say challenge? In today's video, I attempt to recreate the Skyrim art in Photoshop. Why bother? For the glory of Tamriel! I love the storytelling of open world video games, creating new characters, and most importantly, my 10 year old son will think it's cool. This is going to be tricky for me as I don't usually recreate other artists work. I much prefer to create something original. To mix things up a bit, I added my own twist to this iconic image. The stakes are high with this project because if I fail, I'm going to have 20,000 gamers in the YouTube comments telling me that I suck. We all know what the YouTube comments are like, don't we? So come join me on this heroic quest to recreate the Skyrim art in Photoshop. I chose a barbarian girl because I didn't want to create an exact copy of the original image. I wanted to add my own twist and create my own character. And I liked the red of the girl's hair because it was a focal point for the people looking at the image to focus on. Uh, I've always been a world builder. Ever since I was a, a child, I used to draw my own comics. I, I do tend to try and be original in my own artworks. I don't think I've ever done straight out kind of recreations of anyone's artworks before. So this is the first time. So I still wanted to add my own little twist to the story of the image. I got the Barbarian Girl stock from Adobe Stock. That's usually where I get most of my stock images from. And this image just called out to me from the kind of costume and styling, which, which was done very well. The light was on the model was uh, great too. So I always look for kind of dynamic lighting on the stock images of the models that I use. And it's just a really high quality. Plus again, the hair really stood out to me and the face paint as well. For me, I prefer to have a little bit of shadow and light together. I don't like flat images. So if you've got a little bit of rim light, but you've also got some deep shadows in there, for me, that's the perfect image. You, you, you want to play with light and dark and, and you want depth. And that's what light and dark creates. The horned helmet was also from Adobe Stock. I was thinking I'll put it on the on the model. So there's a, a kind of a more of a strong theme of the recreation, but playing around with the warp tool, it kind of started to look a little bit dodgy. So, and it was covering the top of the red hair. For me, the red hair was more important of a focal point than this miswarped dodgy horned helmet, what looked like it had been on a cartoon character. So I created a, a path around the rock in the original reference image just because, to be fair, it's cheating and sometimes it's about working smart and not working hard. Why try and find, spend hours trying to find a, ma a, a rock that matches an Adobe stock when I can create a path on the original rock in the image, bring it into my image and then just put some rock texture into that and we've basically got the same shape. All I have to do then is match the texture of the rock. So basically to get that texture inside the shape, all you have to do is clip the rock image to that shape and it just appears inside like magic and then you just have to match it with light and dark and match the colour. So the stock image that I got was good, but she had no feet. So I was trying to work out, right, so how do I add some feet on? And I thought at first, could I kind of darken the rock so much that you can't see your feet and it looks like it's just going into darkness. And then I thought that is a ridiculous idea. So what I did is I went through a few different stock images and pinched someone else's feet. So I basically used the trusty pen tool, just clipped the legs from the unlucky model and stuck them onto our model. So once the legs are in position, it's all about matching the tone and the colour. So basically, curves is our best friend for that. So using a curves adjustment, I would just match the tone and light and colour of the original image. So the, the original reference image, he has two weapons. And I, even though I didn't want to, to do an exact copy, I wanted some similarities. So I wanted the woman to have two weapons, even if she wasn't holding two weapons. So I downloaded, again, the stock image from... Adobe stock and then I added it to the model and then eventually later I will match that as well with curves for tone and for colour. Darken the figure because the rest of the image was dark so you need to have all your elements match in tonal values. So in my course I cover all these tricks and tips and even more which can take you from zero to hero in Photoshop. The link for this course is in the description. So I created the dragon tail from multiple different images. I did just want to take the easy route and find one dragon tail and use it. But the ones I found weren't up to scratch. So then I had to Frankenstein a dragon tail out of numerous pieces. So the problems I faced while creating this is trying to get different images to mix together and to match together. Puppet Warp was my friend while trying to use this to bend the, the matching images around i had to then change the colors of the images to blend together to be fair it was quite a nightmare but we got there in the end 
So to turn that gold into black, which is not an easy feat by anyone's standards, I had to work it out and eventually I found if you desaturated all the colour from the gold and then used the curves adjustment and just pulled down the highlights right to the bottom, you would get this nice matte black finish. I struggled a little bit with the smoke aspect of this project, but as every project goes, the more you try, the better the outcome is. The most difficult aspect of adding the smoke was trying to find a certain type of smoke. I was getting more cloud stock images when I needed like wisps of smoke. So imagine someone smoking a cigarette and it, it kind of just flowing from the cigarette. That's what I needed to find but in a, and then add movement to that piece of smoke. I made quite a few mistakes with the smoke. I would say it, it was a bit of a nightmare. But again, with these images, you, you try something, it doesn't work and then you keep trying until it does. I think I was quite successful in matching the smoke of both the images. Um, the top part of the smoke, I believe, looked quite good. The bottom part looked quite good. The middle bit took a little bit more effort and practice, but we kind of got a similar result. It's not perfect, but it's as good as we could get. In this image, I used a graphics tablet and a mouse together in combination. I added the rim light to the shoulder of the model and to the other areas, just using clipping masks and a brush. The brush that I use to do that is usually a mixture of soft and hard. It just depends on the area that I'm adding the rim light to. The hair is usually a little bit more difficult, so I had to create the rim light using a soft brush, really small, and then painting in the strands of hair themselves and on a lighter colour than to the actual hair. So adding highlights to the rocks and the dragon tail would have been a little bit harder because the highlights are inside the object, not on the outer side. So the best way to do that is usually to paint some white over the area and then use blend if to pull the lights just into the light area of what you're painting on. I stole the colour palette from the reference image by using Adobe Colour and it's a good way to just download an image, put it into Adobe Colour and it gives you the gradient and colour panel straight away. Adobe Colour is free to use but you do need an Adobe ID subscription. I feel like the final piece was actually quite a good representation of what I had in my head. I didn't want to do an exact copy, as I said I always like to add a little bit of a twist and I believe adding the female warrior with the bright red hair was a nice twist on an already iconic image. If I was to do this project again I would maybe try and add some scales to the dragon tail. I did try with the alligator texture but it just didn't work. So maybe next time I want to try longer or maybe experiment a bit more but I feel like the dragon tail I did create actually added a nice effect to the image, it felt a bit more dark surrealism than dragon. So what do you think of my final artwork? What game art would you like to see me recreate next? Let me know in the comments below. If you want more info on creating those rim light effects you have to check out the next video for Photoshop hacks for creating epic light effects where we cover those techniques in depth. Like and subscribe if you enjoyed the video, see you next time.